And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Crap, the Vlogcast. The Vlogcast comes from a skeptical point of view to answer some of the questions of why. The Vlogcast started as a combination of spite and the Streisand effect because two people here out of three are basically piss ants and, and want to piss off people. Congratulations! You're the people we want to piss off. It's, there's a there's a, a long. Part of this is to follow through with the old adage, sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. Hi, I am your main host. I'm known as Shujin Tribble all over the place. You can find me under that name, S-H-U-J-I-N. I am a little punch drunk tonight, and the worst part about it is I am not drunk. I'll explain as we go along. Introducing everybody, of course, as usual. Uh, top left-hand corner of the bingo card, uh, top right hand corner of your screen right about now from just outside of oh my god are you sure you didn't get a tornado today seriously isn't it only supposed to be in oklahoma kansas wichita whatever the freaking dallin what the hell man you know i've i've joked about the weather in this area uh over the years oh yeah i've seen stuff uh I'll be honest, up here, I have not seen anything like this in a very, very long time. Oh, that's true. That's true. For anybody that's wondering, uh, you find uh, you, you find uh, Dallin's information on, on Facebook, because Dallin's got a Facebook page. And, um, yeah. It's, it's insane. Um, for those of you that, you know, uh, think Facebook is the devil. Um, well... Yeah, we got hit with a bit of a storm cell up here today. Um, a bit? Heavy, very heavy rain, uh, extreme hail. Like, we're talking the size of ice cubes that come out of your your ice, your ice fridge. Yeah. Um, houses across the way are... Hurt. Well, let's just say the insurance companies are going to be very, very busy over the next couple of days. Yeah, they're hurt. Uh, yeah, the, the, automotive, the automotive insurance companies are going to be completely wrecked because there were some I, I'm, I'm positive there were a couple of write-offs mm. um it came and the the worst of it lasted about 10 minutes before it moved on and honestly like i i, I was out today doing stuff it was beautiful not okay not not you know sunny days shorts and a t-shirt but operative word raining. was 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 yes I, that was around noon i got home and was just pottering about and I'll, you know i hear uh the rumbles i see a few things it's like oh it looks like we're in for a bit of rain a bit and, and then thor went holdeth my ale <clears throat> sir oh god man I, I i looked at the video and the first thing i've i've helped out with with weather spotting a little bit uh when i was yeah. still in long island because you know uh, ham radio and and you know stuff mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah my first thought was yeah tornadoes uh north of the what uh, so oh, no. actually we do get tornadoes up here we we've got the we've got the geography we've got the climate yeah but it's a it's, rarity it is rare it is very rare but not impossible that's true yeah that's true i can i can i can say that's very true because we've had a at least one here in the Buffalo region in the like yeah. the time that I've been up over here. That's in the you start. know I I really should have never poked fun about uh, Pittsburgh last night. I, I think this is just karma. Yeah. Speak, yeah. Speaking of uh, karma, hey bitch, in the middle of the Midwest, because you know Tornado Alley and the whole I I don't I don't know what the hell is going on out your way. Bridget High. Uh -huh. See, this is this is, this is the thing. Yeah, uh, weather's been okay here today, but I mean, we do get tornadoes here from time to time. Last bad one we had killed a whole bunch of people, so. Well, that, that qualifies as bad, I think, yeah. Yeah, so they overreact now. If we have just a severe thunderstorm warning, then they have tornado sirens go off, just in case. Oh, that, yeah. What's we, really we, get a, we get a skiff of snow around here, and some people just lose their minds. Um, nah, it's, yeah, no. And uh, over here, the Buffalo market, 
we went from, uh, let's see, was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before, uh, at about uh, 80 Freedom Units. So, you know, it was it was a little toasty. Uh, to today, it was um, more like 63. Bright sunny, but 63. And, and this actually worked out really nicely. Because today, as as I've as I've talked about, today was Tiny Tribble's graduation ceremony, and the school district has been really cool about it. They have basically spaced it out for, you know, uh, five graduates at a time, spaced out about half an hour apart. They get uh, they get to come up onto a very small stage, walk across, got their uh, their cap and gown. Uh, you know, do the do the do the hat toss, a tassel switch, you know, get the the container for their diploma, which you know it'll get mailed because I mean, eh. and they they they've spaced it out over the course of like a week, give or take, so that they can get everybody in a very safe, in a very safe way. So you know, very cool. I was very happy. I got a lot of photographs. I got a lot of video, which was fine up until the gooseneck suction cup thing on my on my uh, on my window that was holding my camera uh, let go. So I've I've got this great shot of of everything that's going on, then just all of a sudden the whole thing just uh, I'll 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 edit that one out and post myself. That's that's I'll figure that out later, but. Um, the school district, at least, is uh, recorded all the stuff, and they're going to put it together. They're going to have a parade for the kids uh, in a couple of days, and the video that they've that they're editing together is going to be shown at a local. I didn't even know this place existed. A local drive-in theater after they have a parade for the kids. So. Hmm. I, I'm very much looking forward to this because I didn't know that we had a drive-in theater anywhere near here. Technically, it's not anywhere near here, per se, because, I mean, it's, you know, it's a 12, 15 miles plus, so, you know. Yeah. But anyway. So, yeah, today has been, uh, like I said, uh, emotionally very up and down for me. So if I'm a little, if I'm a little punch drunk... I have not had anything except coffee earlier tonight. Um, I've not had any. I've not had any booze of any kind in. In. I'm gonna go ahead and say too long. I should really have a little bit more again, sometime soon. Yeah. I mean, you know, get back into the whole swing of trying stuff. Maybe. No, I I I don't, I don't really miss you know trying beer because that usually ends up being really. <laughs> thing although i could get uh, i could get a case of uh, i forget how many um of the uh, guinness at bj's i think i think i saw that but then it was like mm, nah, nah. I, i've i've still got a case and a half of of wine that i haven't gotten through yet and if i'm gonna buy another case of wine in in you know september uh, Eh, I figure it from there. We'll see how that plays out. Anyway, so it's good to be back with you all. As usual, as usual, if you are with us live, uh, you can go ahead and uh, take advantage of the live chat, which um, there uh, we're um, we got nobody right now. Yeah, we is, seem to be missing a couple of people. Which is, but, you know what? Yeah. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> The way that everything's going right now, yeah, is what it is. But if you were watching live, you can take advantage of that. We have uh, we get a lot of good discussions that way, which really helps out. And um, I will uh, I will fill you in on a little piece of information. I am going to be uh, ending my DJ season in Second Life uh, at the end of next week and take uh, take my time off. And I'm going to be scrolling back from six shows a week to two, kind of. Friday night, of course, you know, is kind of my baby. And as Dallin has told me, you know, the chemistry is way different when it's not the three of us, which 
perfectly. It, is. it, it definitely is. Oh, it, <laughs> ab- absolutely. Um, holy crap, of course. You know, I, I mean, it's, let's face it. It's kind of the same thing. It It's, it, there is a different chemistry otherwise. And truth be told, I, I don't like to foist it on Dallin because, I mean, you know, he does enough uh, without getting paid. So, you know, it's, I, I've, I, I already told him, you know, if money was no object, I, <laughs> I, I'd be, I'd be soaking him in, in money. If, if we were pulling anything off of Patreon for oh, this, I'd be, uh, tell me I, about I'd it. be extremely impressed. Tell me about it. However, uh, there is also going to be a, a little thingy that I'm going to be doing probably Tuesdays. I'm not quite sure what time though. Tuesday is normally my off night, otherwise from DJing. But I'm going to be seeing about doing an actual call-in show. And I guess the best way of describing it is uh, shopping it out over to the nice folks over there in uh, in Washington State. So for Sam Mulvey and company, and Rebecca Friedman and, and company and such, for their local radio station and getting it on the air, actual FM community radio at that way. And, you know, I, I, I want to see about kind of doing what cash had done format wise, except not blue, I guess is probably the nicest way of putting it because it's going to be on actual FM radio. Yeah. You know, there's certain things that you're, you're not allowed to say, and I'm not allowed to say the things that I'm not allowed to say. So there's a whole circular problem right and over in there tell people all right you're not allowed to say those things you're not allowed to say well what are they eh, uh, uh, go 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 to youtube and, and go look up this seven dirty words you're not allowed to say you figure it from there we're not going to do them here now because I, I didn't do the whole you know not safe for work we we did that last time and trust me that was really that was really necessary so welcome back for those of you that skipped over last week's um, I did warn you I was a little punch drunk, so this is, this is, this is not a good sign right here that I'm already, you know, a little chatterbox, so we'll figure it, we'll kind of work it from there, but otherwise, how about I just, uh, get us rolling, uh, we'll be able to get the, uh, horrible scopes in, and, uh, we will have a much more light-hearted, mostly more light-hearted, uh, I, I sincerely hope. So let me go ahead and get that rolling. So with five minutes on the clock for you, your five minute freestyle starts right now. And uh, mortarboard. No, it's not motorboat. People that are, uh, you know, some of you really need to look at this. So with graduates, of course, as we know for well, for college, high school, doesn't really much matter. You get the top coat gown, you know which these days are usually a lot thinner than the ones that I had to deal with. And trust me, when you're out at the end of June on Long Island with a lot of sun and no breeze and no clouds for an hour, you know, it, it, it gets to be really um, uncomfortable. It's why people insist on, you know, an hour of that. It's just whatever. But I did remember that the hat, the the traditional flat top, squared off hat is called a mortarboard. And I actually thought about it earlier and I, and I was trying to figure out, okay, no, no, wait a minute, where where does this actually come from? I, I thought that I knew and I went ahead and I double checked and yeah, in this case, mortarboard, because its design is very reminiscent of by name again, a mortarboard where you would put mortar sort of like concrete, but not onto a, a, a piece squared off kind of the same shape so that you'd be able to, you know, crawl up whatever the, uh, whatever the mortared facade was that you were building and, you know, put your bricks in there, put the mortar around it, tap it in, square it off, continue on. You know, we've, we've, we've seen the stuff from, you know, turn to the previous century, you know, uh, video and, and, and whatnot. And it's the kind of thing. There are a lot of graduation ceremonies where they're not allowing the kids 
in this kids in this case it doesn't have to be high school kids it could be the college kids be this may the graduates are not allowed in a lot of cases to decorate the tops of their mortarboards some of them have been cute about it and they've decorated the underside which all right you know what you know a for you know sticking it to the man all right good on you there but my little one was allowed to decorate his it was really cool he painted on it and if i remember correctly on the bottom edge were he painted different colored gladiolas uh, if i've forgotten which flowers they are please forgive me but what he told me was that the flower that he chose was because they were supposed to be symbolic for strength cool the button in the middle he put uh i forget which uh lgbt qa plus flag colors i forget which one he, he he used one in particular it could have been trans it could have been uh the rainbowish i i really just don't remember which one it was i was pretty happy about that but he also put we oh damn it now i've forgotten exactly what it was we are the future um see i took a picture of it and now i've completely forgotten what the hell it was i warned you that i was a little uh, i was a little punchy today this is uh, this is this is the way that it is but he did it because it was a message that it's hard to it's hard to argue with that because it's true the graduates are the future they are the ones who are going to use what we have taught them collectively and stepped forward into how things work and how they want it to be what kind of job they're going to get how they're going to use that they are the future and if my kid has any indication whatsoever of what they are going to build together and you know what I have no worries. I have no fear. I'm proud. I can't wait to see what it is that they collectively put together. I, for one, welcome our new, young, ideological overlords. Is episode 315 on the docket, Your Honor? By the way, I, I gotta I gotta I gotta tell Dallin about that in, uh something in a second. Uh 315. Class dismissed. Yeah, like I said, you know, graduations are happening. You know, this is this is this is not the this is not the world we were expecting our graduates to be getting into. And Lord knows, we know full well they definitely didn't plan any of this, not by a long shot. I don't think anybody did. No, I, I think it's fair to say nobody did. So you know we're gonna we're gonna kind of touch on those things, what we think that they're gonna have to be dealing with, and to look back at where we were when we were graduating high school, as uncomfortable as that might be, because you know it's been a long time, and you know what were we looking forward to, and kind of take it from there. Now, the reason I I, uh, I mentioned uh, that I, I, I got to mention this to Dallin is uh, Dallin and I spoke about something last night. Uh, he he specifically was uh, uh, made reference to uh, Night Court. And uh, and uh, I for- see now I don't remember what his uh, I, I don't remember what his uh, what his job description, his title was for uh, Mac who but he he would he was always coming over and coming over to Harry and saying case number whatever 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 on the docket your honor geez does that sound oh. at all familiar 
he was a, he was a court clerk. Okay, that's the uh, that's the person. It was clerk. See, at first I thought it was bailiff, but no, that was bull. Yep, and and uh, Roz. And, and, and before the old, Roz, it oh, was the old, else, the old little, was somebody else. Oh my God, the little lady. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, that that show kind of had a Spinal Tap moment a bit with that particular character. Yeah, just 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 a little bit, but yeah, no. So the whole all this time that I've been saying this episode, whatever, whatever, whatever on the docket, Your Honor, that's where that came from. That's where I that's where I took that from. So anybody that had caught up to it up until this point, shame on you. You you should have been watching Must See TV on Wednesday nights. Was it Wednesday night? Thursday night? You know what? Shit, I don't care. Whatever. Whatever night they were on. It was NBC. I don't care. Proud as a peacock. Some people... Uh, I'll, I'll shut up now. It's late. Shut up. I don't... Whatever. Um, so... Uh, how about I? Uh, how about I get? Uh, I get rolling over here. Where is the? Oh, that's how that works. I hope that worked the way it was supposed to. <laughs> I'm, I'm having. I'm having a moment. Don't. Don't. Yeah, you know what? I probably should have taken a nap earlier. <laughs> Before we before we get over to the uh, into the horrible scopes uh, and kind of getting a little bit of time so that uh, we're all on board there, I have I have learned over the years that having emotionally trying times are very exhausting for me. Is what it is. So, as you can probably imagine, 15 years after my wife is gone, and we finally finish, I say we, him, finish high school, and getting ready to move on to whatever is the next big thing, which, yes, is college, he's accepted. You can probably imagine, um, today's been... Today has been a little exhausting on me, but I'm going to keep trying my best, of course, as always. So if I'm stumbling just a little bit, please forgive me. I actually do have a box of tissues right next to me, so... Because something tells me I'm probably going to need them. That's the way it is. So if you guys are ready to go for the uh, horrible scopes... Let's go ahead and uh, tell everybody what they should be looking forward to this week. Yeah, I got it pulled up. I'm here. I don't see it. Where'd you stick it? I it, it's 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 the same link every time. So let me uh, let me get you your go the hell away. There you go. If you want to bookmark that for yourself for later, it's it's always going to be the same link. Because I just erase the old one and just add it into the new one. Anonymous Hedgehog, Anonymous Narwhal. Thanks, Google. Hmm. All kinds of fun. So, here we go. Let me go ahead and uh, get you going for your horrible scopes for this week. Aries... You've always been told Star Trek is fiction, it's not real. And now, look, 30 years later, personal digital assistance in our pockets, instantaneous worldwide video communication via radio waves, computers with the power to simulate the structures of the universe, which, by the way, yes, I actually looked that up. That's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. You weren't a loser. You were just super tech hipsters. Without the neck beards, and and you weren't gatekeepers of the whole thing, so you know, feel good for yourselves. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go next. Uh, Taurus, you better be careful of your streaming media company suggested movies at this point. 
that suggested back to back to back triple play movie marathon of Krull, the nude bomb and the mad called Flintstone is the reason for you to really reconsider the movies you're normally watching anyway. And I, you know what? The, the thing I warned you guys about last night, it did happen. This weekend on one of my channels up here, they are running the first three Mission Impossible movies sequentially for the entire weekend on this one channel. <laughs> so, you know, it's Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise. Look at, look at the bright side. It's not like it's um, the Christmas movie over and over and over and over and over and over and over. That is a fair point. We'll see what happens, you know, around December. It's true. Assuming, uh, assuming we make it that far. <laughs> it's, it's true. And I, you are not bipolar. You exist in a quantum state somewhere between south and north, between east and west, between up and down. Your life is an existential blip in the temporal surface of the earth. At any moment, you are a quibit. Cubit? Cubit. What is that word? Cubit. Cubit of information seeking resolution for its question. Now that inoculated your brain, you're ready to face your friends who believe what Deepak Chopra says. And as I have said many times before, you can stick that in your quantum. Yes, it's, it's true. <laughs> By the way, the funny part of it is, um, a lot of that stuff actually made sense. Uh, in, in, a, in a slight metaphorical method. It, it really does. Oh, no, I, I, I don't doubt that. Um, just again, it, for me, it, it's a uh, it, it's a psychological thing. The, the second I hear Deepak Chopra, the, the first thing I hear is quantum in that in that accented voice of his. Again, not throwing shade on the guy's accent, but I'm definitely throwing shade on the wackadoodle theories this guy tosses out. Wackadoodle is pr arguably the nicest thing we could say all night about. Cancer Moonchild. <laughs> The summer is almost here, so it's about as good a time as any to defrost your freezer. Because once the thunderstorms start rolling through, you won't have much of a choice once the power goes out. So you might as well just get it over with now. Yeah, and on that subject, we had a couple of fizzles here tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. I learned, I learned something today about uh, network addiction. <laughs> no, because... No argument there. Well, my internet went out for a little bit. My cell phone went out for a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, good point. And honestly, I was kind of drumming my fingers on the armrest of the of the couch, kind of going, okay, guys, anytime now. Like, it, it was... It was... And I mean, speaking as somebody who watched the internet be born and grow oh mm -hmm. yeah and thinking oh well, i remember back in the day yeah uh the, the 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 feeling i had in that moment of in those moments of silence was like i said unnerving <laughs> you could always just pull uh, out your copy of unreal tournament 2004 and you know just play offline so oh right no power never mind so I'll, I'll shut up yeah no, so I, I I broke at the switch and played uh, played asphalt in offline mode, and you know which is fun. The trouble is you don't earn anything off it, so it's not like you can upgrade your cars. God damn it. Anyways, uh, moving on with Leo. You have a mighty roar, but you also have a cute meow. Quit straining those vocal cords and use your kitten charms to get what you want on Friday. Worst case, you've got those hidden hypodermic needles you call claws. Remember, the skin on the scalp is super easy to get superficial blood out of. Ergo, a stranger may mean you harm this week, so greet everyone with a blood-curdling shriek. Screaming in French isn't great. Primal screaming is better. But learn to mix together German and Klingon, and you're safe from any doors in your way. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a thing from the last set of horrible scope sorry you guys missed it yeah, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm suddenly and, I, and all i'm suddenly hearing is fuss roll da bitch <laughs> <laughs> too much time room 
Bridges gets it. I get it. First rope. Yay. <laughs> is this is it? Oh, I know that, but I, I know the other one too, where where Dash was like, "Louder, yay! Louder, yay!" And finally, and then does the full full throw that, and like Dash just goes, "It's a fan video that somebody made." <laughs> I will find it. I have no doubt of that. <laughs> Libra. <laughs> Summer camp season is starting up. Oh, this I, I loved writing this one, by the way. Summer camp season is starting up, and we do have a job suggestion for you. After you watch the movie Meatballs again, which, by the way, you can find the in, the opening uh, on YouTube, easy enough. I know. I downloaded it. Never mind, that's, that's, a, that's a different thing. Uh, go apply to be a satanic guidance counselor. You'll get to teach about inclusion, bodily autonomy, empathy, rationality, and how best to clean and polish Baphomet's hooves. So, Bridget. Oh, sorry. I thought it was Dallas. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. sorry I was Google fooling. Um, I'm, losing, yeah, I'm losing my mind over here. I'm sorry, uh, Scorpio. Uh, you don't believe that it's possible to have a smile and laugh that both delight and terrify children at the same time. You really, really need to watch more Tim Curry performances. He was the Pirate King in the Pirates of Penzance in 1980, then the Joker in Batman, the animated series, in 1992. Oh, actually, wait. Uh, Tim was let go for having bronchitis. Uh, we'll have to revisit this later. Sagittarius, no matter how badly you don't want to light something on fire or break some expensive objects, don't. Knowing your dexterity score of about five, you'll probably end up doing both of these things by accident later. Or, you know, you could just not go out this week. That's a viable plan, too. Yeah, yeah, nothing like a dex score of five to make you feel good about your... Capricorn! Did you know, did you know that Tuesday, June 9th would have been the equivalent of April 69th? Nice. Yeah. Meaning that you missed out on the whole 69-420 date celebration. Of course, you're probably not one of those people that uses day, month, year for your dates. So tell a joke to a sysadmin or someone from Europe and they're going to laugh. Just trust me on this one. <laughs> Aquarius, we know you're constantly worried about what other people think. It's... Hold on. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, we know you're constantly worried about what other people think. It's good to consider other people's thoughts on a subject. But unless the person is Darth Vader and you're a general in the Empire with bad news for him yet don't really need to worry what most people are thinking about you. Because by the time you're concerned about that, you are dead. <laughs> Some people press their clothes by putting them between the mattress and box spring and sleeping on them. That's a lot of work, and mattresses are pretty clumsy to work with. Why not just buy a super heavy blanket and sleep in your clothes? Those blankets are comfortable, and it'll save you needing to lift your mattress first thing in the morning to get dressed. So, those are your horrible scopes for this week. Um, always look for the union label. 15% uh, restocking fee if you don't like them. You got what you paid for. And if you don't like them, make up your own. I mean, whatever. You know what? Just piss off. I don't care. Whatever. I did go looking for information about Rafe Badari for this week. I have no new information. My numbering system, because of the way the things are, are a little funky compared to last week. Where it is what it is. He was originally uh, arrested June 17, 2012. With no new information, that effectively means that as of the recording of tonight's show... It is now seven years, 11 months, and 27 days 
since Rafe was unjustly incarcerated for thought crimes. Our hopes and our thoughts are still with you and your family. We are still waiting. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, just just uh, admit entirely. I graduated June 1987. Anybody else? Thank you. 1989 for me. Same time of year, but yeah. 85 for me. So we, um, it's fair to say that over the course of our time, we've seen some stuff. In my case, um, I very specifically remember uh, July of 87. We had the, uh, we had the space shuttle destroy itself Mm -hmm. um and i very specifically remember that as a moment of absolute what the hell because the stoners came in from from lunch into uh, english class and said that they were late because they were listening to the radio and they heard what happened and i mean why the hell would we believe them only to find out later that seven astronauts are dead Yep. I I was on my way to school uh, when I heard the news, and I didn't believe it. Like, I thought, okay, you know what? They, they caught a picture of the booster separating. There might have been a flare, and somebody thought the shuttle blew up. And I got home that night because, you know what? We didn't have YouTube back then. Um, but I got home, and it was all over the news. And I just remember sitting there slack-jawed. I remember my mom and dad were looking at, like, they, we all just, there was nothing we could say. Um, I'd say about the only other time I felt that way, watching the news, um, after that was nine eleven. Yeah. yeah. But that was even worse because by that point, I had friends in the States, uh, and we were talking on Messenger, and... Yeah, you want to talk about feeling powerless? Somebody, somebody you know, somebody you respect is having a meltdown on Skype. Was it even Skype? Well, whatever it was, well, they're having a meltdown. I'm like, what can you do? I can't exactly reach through the. I can't reach the screen, and give them a hug. You know. Yeah. It. Yeah. It was. It was brutal. And I'm trying to remember, um, for you, Bridget, uh, 85, well, let's see, we had to deal with, uh, oh, the political stuff that was going on from, uh, from Reagan. Not the whole Iran contra, yeah. Yeah, yep. get old Ollie North. I was just following orders, sir. Yep. Your, your honor. Yep. There was that. There was also the um, uh, the air traffic controllers striking and being summarily uh, fired. Yeah, I remember that. I think I group uh, decided to like do stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's. It, it's fair to say that um, if you take a listen to uh, We Didn't Start the Fire, Billy Joel, 1989, it is fair to say that um, the back half, yeah, the back half of that, um, we collectively experienced. I mean, there, there, there are pieces where, you know, we we can sing it we can we can look at the at the lyrics and you know it it would take us a couple of seconds to actually go oh wait i remember that hypodermics on the shore yeah i i I remember that you know medical Mm -hmm. waste uh washing up onto the shores of long island from it turned out uh medical waste that was coming from uh across the water in uh jersey is where it got dumped and it ended up you know over in my townships at the time um 
Bernie gets screwdriver stabbing uh, guys on the mm -hmm. uh, on the subways, uh, the trains in uh, New York City. Yeah. I mean, there were items that didn't make it on there that were moments that were both a combination of fearful and helpful, I guess, at the same time. Uh, Curtis Sliwa and the Guardian Angels mm -hmm. in New York City, which was both a a terrifying and comforting item. And yeah. that's 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 kind of one of the things that I wanted to hit on specifically for us because it falls under the same time frame and it seems to be kind of kind of important to, you know, some of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, Dallin, you obviously sound like you, you know something about it. Yeah, no, the, the angels, I, um, again, you know, back in the eighties, it was all the ninja craze. So, you know, everybody was buying martial arts magazines and a lot of us up in Canada, we're, we were trying to figure out ways that we could uh, mail order some of that, you know, cool ninja gear across the border, which we actually couldn't get. But I remember reading an article about the guardian angels. Yep. And, and just about. Pardon me one second. TP, you take care of yourself and um yeah. thank you for the uh thank you for the info uh info on that man. Have yourself yeah. a good rest. And I at first I thought um I th I thought it was a good idea because you know at, at now again I'm I'm reaching back to my teenage mind here which is still there. Hmm. You know at the time, the, the way the article was written was that, you know, the cops can't always be there. And, you know, was there was there the kind of tension then that we see now? I don't know. I can't say because I wasn't looking into it at the time. But, you know, that there were people who were willing to go out there and do their best to try to either de-escalate conflict or if they couldn't de-escalate it, they actually had the skills and the will to forcefully de-escalate it, you know, th hopefully non-fatally. I, I thought it was a good thing. Um, I know the police weren't too crazy about having vigilantes in the area, and th that seems to be a, a constant thing. Um, and again, I see, I see two sides of it. Uh, on the one side is, yeah, the cops don't want to be shown up by some guy in tights and a mask. You know, I'm looking at you, Mr. Parker. Uh, <laughs> now, now that, that's a, to me, that's the negative side. You know, it's it's a vanity thing. Like, you know, like well, who the, who the hell do you think you are trying to be a hero? You know, I wear the badge. I'm supposed to be the hero. That being said, if you look at it from a liability point of view if you think about the incredibles i don't know if you guys have seen that movie oh yeah okay so superheroes or vigilantes were outlawed in that movie because of the damage that they could cause and the fact that they theoretically answered to no one but themselves so there was a with with a vigilante there's a lack of accountability whereas police ideally and again I, I cannot stress that hard enough yeah uh I, I, although really you know what you want to come after me uh chat and anybody else come on i dare you anyways um there are there are codes there are rules there are procedures and as we've spoken many times before if if a police officer elects to use lethal force at least again up here when the gun clears the holster they know that there's going to be a ton of paperwork and an investigation if they pull that trigger whereas a vigilante they don't have to worry about any of that so they can if if allowed to do what they do you know what if they what if they do get the wrong guy you know or what if you know, let's say you're the, the Punisher, you know, and 
spring bullets is the thing with him. If you've read any of the comics and no, he, he's been involved in fights where pe innocent people have been hurt either by him or by the guy he's shooting at. Um, and I remember one comic series that I saw where, yeah, somebody, somebody was trying to kill him. He ended up finally getting, he, he got the guy. It was pretty gruesome, but he turned and there was a guy on the subway with him who was injured and it did not sit well with him. Like he, 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 he knew that his war was his war. No one else needed to get involved. Um, but I think, I, I think there is that fear from an official standpoint that vigilantes are just, they don't answer to any kind of authoritative body. And from a liability perspective, um, you know, city governments would not like that. And I think that's what happened with the guardian angels is that the, maybe the people liked them, but the cops didn't. And actually, I think uh, in that article I read, one was killed by a police officer by mistake. Uh, just again, things got out of control. Cop pulled a gun, fired off a round, got the wrong guy. So. And now that I've completely derailed this, I do apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um I just pulled up the uh, I just pulled up the uh, the wiki article. I'm gonna have it linked in anyway. Uh, I didn't realize that they had started as early as May of '77. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I guess technically '79 is when they actually uh, began the uh, the Guardian Angels by name. Um. I'm not quite sure how to uh, how to go on that one, but uh, let me take it from a different angle. Uh, part of the reason why I wanted to pull this one in, uh, Bridget, had you heard uh, or seen on the news about some of these sections of cities where the citizens have basically said, yeah, um, this is ours now. Police go bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. There's uh, the Chaz in uh, yeah. Capitol Hill, Seattle. And last I read, uh, Nashville is having their own autonomous zone, which is really hard to believe in a red state, but Nashville's kind of blue. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why I wanted to uh, kind of hit that is because, well, for two items. One, to me, both of these items seem very, very similar. Larger in scope now, but very similar. You know, where the, the citizenry are basically saying, look, um, we've got this. You can shoo, shoo, you're, you're, you're fine. Go away. Do, do something else somewhere else. Thank you very much. And I know it's kind of early to go ahead and say, you know, mission successful. But there really does seem to be a, a real close ties one from the other to me for something like this to see this kind of a this kind of a shift from well the official actors for protection one it would expect as as Dallin said you know the, the what was the, what was the word that you used for it you know whatever uh, Do, yeah. doesn't matter doesn't matter <laughs> See, I told you. Uh -huh. Slow in the head tonight. Sorry. But the the idea of seeing the citizenry basically coming out and saying, you know, um, we got this. That's that's not something that happens very often. So I was wondering what, what kind of thoughts you had about it, other than you sound like you had a little bit of a smile on your face when you talked about Chaz. Well, we just have to wait and see what happens. I mean, so far they're doing okay. I'm just mm. afraid that the cops are going to come back in in a couple of weeks, you know, get tired of the hold off and decide to uh, serve and protect the shit out of everybody. Well, I'm seeing, I've seen a few things. Uh, for one, 
uh, they're trying to start their own garden. It's not going so well. It's also early. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, they also put up a list of things that they were looking for. Um, it was very hipster sounding. They were looking for particular types of clothes. They were looking for ice, the good kind. This was written down on a board. Um, some members of Black Lives Matter got up and started talking about how this was sabotaging what they were trying to do with Black Lives Matter, and they were booed off stage by a bunch of white people. I just saw a video earlier tonight of a preacher, a, a Christian priest who was in the Chaz uh, trying to say something, and he was attacked. Another person was forced to kiss another man by a crowd. I, I've seen the videos of all of this. So, yes, as a model, it might sound good. It, it, the fact that there is a community willing to get together to say, you know what, we can police our own, fine. But there are also a lot of bad actors in there who are causing an awful lot of fear. And before anybody says, well, it's only 200 people, there are also 500 residents in those six blocks that didn't ask for this. You know what? If you want to start something like that, fine. But what these people have done and what it's looking like to, let's say, a moderate person, this is an this is a invasion by a foreign colonial force. They they have said when you cross that border, you are technically leaving the USA, so they say. Um that's there no there again there are signs saying now that, leaving usa when you go into the chats yeah i'm forgive my my way of looking at it i've i've already said before that my trying to find my emotional footing with how much content i've been taking in i've had to heavily curtail the amount of stuff that i've been pulling in with yep. everything that's been going on, plus you know yeah, the, you, the emotional you've side, a, you've got a few. You, you your spoons are being taxed. I get that. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I I want folks to understand that the who might be listening afterwards and not looking at it all. Um, I've got a I've got a little bit of a I've got a little bit of a look of not knowing and thinking about it. And it could easily come across as, mm, nah, not not so much. No, for for me, it's much more a matter of I'm kind of first taking this in and wondering, okay, guys, what are you doing? That's that's yeah. that's much more of what it's what it is is going on. Um, it's just what what I've seen some of the videos I've seen that are allegedly coming from the place. And I say allegedly because who knows these days. Fair. Um, it, it, it sounds to me like some people are just bound and determined to shoot themselves in the foot for this. And like, honestly, you, you just want to look and go, what are you doing? Like, did you honestly think of this, or are you, are, are you LARPing? Yes, that, that's, that's, you know, that's fair. And again, my, my biggest concern, again, are the 500 innocents in those six city blocks that are just, you know, they woke up one morning and suddenly, what the hell just happened? Okay, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to have you kind of take a grand pause there for just a second. Uh, I, I don't know if you know about this one, Bridget. Uh, do you did you get the chance to see or read uh, the play musical musical? It was it was uh, turned into a film or film and then a theater production, whatever it was, uh, called Seventeen Seventy Six. No. Okay, I did, and it was supposed to have been basically a. A, a musical semi reenactment of what was happening here in the colonies as they were finally saying uh yeah we need to we need to go ahead and give king george the 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 kiss off 
And the reason why I wanted to bring this up and, um, damn it, just somebody just, just pop in the, our, our thing 1776 so I can look it up later and, and link it. One of the things that I remembered about it was that they went ahead and were trying to say everybody, all of the Continental Congress have to be in agreement that we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and and break off relations with England. We need to kick out George. We all have to be together on this. And one of the things that stuck with me all this time was, and I've, I've sort of memorized it from all this time, the contingent from New York abstains courteously. And I forget who it was, but somebody was not having that shit. No, you need to come down on this one. It's either you're with us or you're not. We need to be completely in agreement on this. And the reason why this kind of comes into my head now is that these members of the Continental Congress here in the United States, I know, I know, I know. Just just bear with me a second. They were making a decision for not just themselves, but for thousands upon thousands of other people that weren't really part of the the decision-making process. So is something like this going to happen? Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. We were all born, you know, into in, into an area where we didn't have any kind of input whatsoever into the laws that govern what we do. But, you know, we kind of do it. Now, are these areas really, you know, a sovereign land? Nope. No. No. And, and, and for them to go ahead and, and try to make that... No, guys, no. So if they're really kind of trying to do the whole, we've completely seceded, we're, uh, oh God, what the hell do they call the, what the, what the hell do those people call themselves? The, the free citizens, not separatists. The sovereign citizens. Sovereign citizens, they're what it is. You guys really want to go ahead and pull that bullshit? No, man, really? No. I understand what you guys are trying to do, but it's not... Look, I'm just going to go ahead and say this once. If the folks that you're trying to support are saying, uh, no, don't do this, this isn't going to help us, yeah, um, you really need to take a step back and realize... And that's another allegation. And again, I... No, I know. I, I, I've heard conflicting reports on this, so you know, take take whatever I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Um, there's been talk of shakedowns with merchants inside the the Chaz, where if you want protection, it's five hundred dollars. Some of those five hundred people are scared yeah. that if they speak out that they will be attacked because there is a there's again a report of a rapper raz which is really funny because if you're a jay gals uh listener and you know the song rage in the cage i'm waiting for the remix called raz and the Chaz. but anyways i just dated myself you're welcome that's um it's not what i recognize <laughs> yeah considering um, i'm going through all of my freaking music right now and try to get everything sorted the fact that i don't know this one yeah, that's that's a little perplexing to me. So, you know, going yeah, on. Yeah, well, the same album as Centerfold, but anyways. Um but there there, there was um there's video of somebody in his group <clears throat> proclaiming that they were the police now in Dutch Jazz. Like I said, it's a lot of this seems to be it's almost larping. It, it, it's as if they they don't really care about the political aims, they want the power. They got the endorphin and again, high. You know, but again, I, I'm only going off of, you know, what I've what I've read or what I've seen. Yeah, that's fair. Could it, you know, could it be debunked? Could it be out of context? Maybe. 
I just haven't had the chance to really investigate it much further because like you, um, there are other things I like to do during the day, specifically ones that aren't going to make me have a coronary. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I said, you know, I said last week that I was, you know, I was heart sick from everything that's been happening and I don't even live there. You know, we, we've had protests here for, for black lives matter and everybody was peaceful. You know, any, anybody that did get arrested was an asshole who deserved to be arrested, but it was contained, handled, done. You know, anyways. Um, and then you got towns like Buffalo that should have been peaceful, but that's a whole other piece. That's the thing, you know, like the, the, the peaceful prote protests. Um, I'm fine with that. You know, you, you want to get out there, you want to... You want to express that there was a problem. But the second a bottle gets thrown, the, the second something gets broken, the second the police are called into action, a protester, I will, I'm fine with. A rioter, do, it, it does not accomplish what people think it accomplishes because from a more moderate perspective, it engenders fear fear of what could come and what stands between you and what could come the very thing against which the protesters were fighting originally and 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 we know we know we've seen yeah. you know Dallin is is specifically talking about the folks who are on the protester side and before before anybody goes ahead and, and says it, yeah, we know. The riots have also gotten started by bad actors on the police forces side. We know. We've seen it. I am positively disgusted with some of it. Um, there were, for the... We we've we've kind of I'm not gonna say joked about but we've we've mentioned how uh, and Bridget knows uh, that uh, using using um, irritant agents like tear gas is banned in wartime by the Geneva Conventions. We looked that one up. That that one is is a real. But there's nothing in there that talks about domestic use so the whole meme about you know you're you're doing to your citizens what you wouldn't do to other citizens in wartime okay yeah that's 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 true it's true but there's also uh there's also one that i didn't know about and bridget i'm wondering if you knew about this one According to the Geneva Conventions, you are not allowed by, I guess you might say, by, by the Articles of War. I'm using the wrong, the wrong terminology for it, but the, the agreed-upon established rules of conflict. You are not to fake a surrender. Right. We had... Yeah police forces that had taken a knee had stooped down in order to what turned out to be to bring on a false sense of security to bring the protesters closer who were otherwise not doing anything other than being loud brought them in closer just so that they could fire gas and and flashbangs and and yeah and every one of those officers needs to answer for that yep i'm in full agreement with that that was that was a shit move yep it and was and that and, and that okay. now makes it incredibly dangerous for all of the other police agencies because mm -hmm. nobody should not not gonna say isn't going to nobody should trust 
any police forces at this point, if one group can do it, all of them could do it. Yeah. Which is like I said, those officers need to gone be yeah they need to be gone but they also need to be tried they need to be jailed and any pensions or benefits that uh, they get they should that should be gone too because you you have committed what is really a heinous act it is an act that actually it, it goes against the very code that when you put on that badge you were supposed to uphold um, hold, hold on a second. Um, unless there's a by any means necessary clause in the police charter, which I don't know about. Yeah, depends on a whole bunch. The, um, Bridget, for, for, uh, for, for the military, there, there is an established, um, code of conflict, isn't there really? Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a code of conduct during wartime. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've talked about what I thought was one of the things that was like a, a, you do not do, which was you do not shoot a medic. You do not shoot a Red Cross because you you don't do that. Yeah, that yeah. that went same out the window thing. a long time ago. Well, yeah, same thing with uh, you know clergy members. Yeah, but it 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 had been a thing. That's that's just a like like one of the old ones old, old ones, was you don't shoot the messenger. Messengers were given a free pass because they were the messengers. All right, there, there's no such thing anymore because, I mean, you know, we killed all the carrier pigeons, whatever. Um, yeah. But, like I had said before, I mean, I remember some World War II era uh, movies, well, movies about, you know, World War II conflicts and, and, and on, on the oceans and whatnot, and you do not shoot a medic. I mean, it, it was something that for me, it was just like, it just makes sense. You don't shoot a medic. You, you, you just don't. And even, even to this day, I mean, to me, it's like, I mean, why? They're non-combatant. They're trying to save a life that, or at the very least, you know, stop suffering. Why? It, it, it's, it's positively unthinkable to me. But maybe I'm, I'm kind of weird one that way. But they've done it. Apparently they've, they've shot, uh, they've shot, let's call it what it is, a glorified hockey puck. No, sorry, it's a weaponized hockey puck. Mm-hmm. You know, without the need for Al McInnes. Yeah, that's a that's a joke on this side of the. It's, a, it's fine. Yeah. I, I get you on that one, but um, medics, um, water. You don't uh, you don't destroy sources of water. And you know, uh, not necessarily pallets, but you know, wrapped containers of of water for groups. No. Nope. Slash them open, done. Slashing freaking tires from from uh, uh, peop people's uh, cars because we don't want them to be driving really fast through these areas and, and vroom vroom and, and and you know. Forgive me for a second, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, and I, I think this goes a lot to what we talked about last week when it came to training. Um. You know, we spoke last week about, you know, I think I used the example of Illinois. Yep. Yeah, and I, I see what Stephanie was talking about, about, you know, about uh, soldiers being trained properly in first aid so they don't technically need medics. Yeah, before you go on, that that's the one I wanted to hit. Uh, in yeah. this particular case, the medics that I'm talking about were the ones who were there to support anybody that needed their services, but obviously it was going to be much more for the protesters because, I mean, let's yeah. face it, you're in street clothes versus, you know, uh, the road warriors from, from Mad Max with, with their, <laughs> you know, with their, with their spud yeah, you, pumpers. You, it's the plebs versus the space marines, basically. Yeah. 
but yeah, they, they were, they were those medics and the press were, were getting accosted. We're getting shot. They were getting, Mm -hmm. I mean, a freaking a press group from Australia got attacked at least, at least one news reporter got hit in the face and is going to be blind in the left eye for for life and i hate to say it this way she's one of the lucky ones because there are a number of people who have had their eye basically shot out using yeah. these glorified hockey pucks mm-hmm. yeah um we spoke last week about training and we brought up the uh the illinois um, requirements for the job versus I think it was uh, the RCMP. And the biggest thing I found, or one of the biggest differences I found was the uh, psychological pro- uh, aspect. You know, uh, up here, they kind of crack your head open and get in there to see whether or not you are of the right metal, mentally speaking, to become a cop. Metaphorically down speaking. There, yeah, down there, not so much from what I could see. No. Um, and that, like, if anything comes out of this, I would like to see that change. I I would like to see much more rigid requirements for anybody who joins the police force. And if the police unions are the ones that are getting these things, um, I don't want to say dumb down, but relax the the specifications or re- relax the restrictions. If they're the ones that are influencing that, then you get the unions the hell out of there. Because they, at that point, all they're doing is trying their best to recruit, you know, whatever thugs they can. Yeah, And that that needs to stop. I fully agree that that needs to stop because that's not helping anybody except you know when when this calms down and it will because things will eventually i don't know if if run out of steam but eventually something's going to happen that's going to put a stop to this it's going for how long yeah it's going to run its course whatever that course is going to be yeah but for how long how long before if nothing changes, if the if the same cops that have done all this crap now, if they're back out on the streets doing exactly the same thing, what, five years from now, we're going to be doing another show where we could basically copy-paste this one onto that one because nothing will have changed? Bold of you to assume that you're still going to be hired in five years here. You couldn't do this show without me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I hate when he's right. Uh, that's true. That's the worst part about it. That's true. You know, it, it, that's anyway. the thing is that something has to change. Because r- right now, everybody, like the, the cops went on, bl- a lot of these cops went on blast. And they've got unions to protect them. They've got the so-called brotherhood to protect them. And they're trying. Yeah, and, and they're trying. And, you know, I, I saw I saw the, the, I don't know if it was a speech or, I don't want to call it a press conference, but the, oh, the, I, the, yeah. the NYPD, the head of the union there, it's like, we hate being treated like, a... okay, look, you kind of brought it on yourself because where were, okay, where were those other three when the fourth one was kneeling on George Floyd? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you really should. You really shouldn't do that. Nah, shut up. Stop calling us um, animals. Stop treating us like that. Treat us with the respect that we deserve because God damn it. We deserve to have respect. You will respect my authority. Yeah, e- exactly. And you know, I've, I've watched that video a couple of three times. I've seen it spun um, a couple of different ways. One's where, you know, the, the, well, the, the cops are making an impassioned please. Like, no, no, you sound like a petulant child who 
was supposed to look out for the people. And if you had a bad cop or five in your troop, you get the hell rid of them. This whole brotherhood thing, this thin blue line. No. Yeah. If you, if, if that kind of institution, which is unofficial, but if that's being used to cover up or excuse one cop or, you know, cops bad behavior, you know, or to, to excuse the fact that that person should not be wearing a badge, then no, that has to go. Yeah. You know, and it's, yeah, I, I feel for the cops who are trying to do good. The, the ones who still hold the ideals of, you know, truth, just, um, no, what is it? Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. The three directives from RoboCop. Because let's face it, that that is kind of the thing. And and it's it's it may not be a perfect example of what should be for policing, but it's I'm casting it's a, a wide no, 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 I know, I know. I was gonna, I was gonna say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good starting off point. Yeah. What I was, what I was gonna say was though that um, the thing that sucks for me the most, and and I believe it or not, I think we're gonna end up getting a good laugh out of Bridget on this one. Hmm. Believe it or not, the thing that hurts the worst was listening to this guy effectively snarling and hearing it in this Brooklyn accent that was just like, oh, "Oh, shit, this is what I could have sounded like if I didn't clear my voice and and be self-conscious about the way that I sounded. Oh, shit, I'm so glad I don't sound like that anymore. Fuck me. Yeah. There's my one. There's my one for the night. Yeah. So, so the next, the next time I do a Brooklyn accent, you know, pl- please understand, oh, I'm doing it for theatrical purposes. Oh, dude, trust me, your your Brooklyn accent is so bad. I don't think anybody would think that you were even serious about it. Yeah, don't forget about, about it. it. You forget uh, about it. You, okay. Now, now you're going to Jersey. We're not going. We're not going to do this. <laughs> really not going to. Yeah. Hey, you see that? That's the thing. Okay. Like I, I don't know Brooklyn from Jersey from. And, and you know, St- Stephanie's right. Too many of the U.S. police have had, quote, warrior training. And that is a major problem. And, and it's, tr- it's true. It's very much true. So while we've got, you know, oh, my God, I can't believe it's, it's got, we've gotten as far as we have at this point. Yeah. The, the stuff that we were talking about earlier that we've seen from our youth time. Yeah. That... You know, like I was talking about with uh, with the shuttle, we didn't know what was going to come of that, but we were afraid of what was going to end up happening with the space program, and and reasonably rightly so. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, we ended up ha- oh uh, uh, shoot, what the hell was his name? Uh, Freeman, Doctor Freeman, who showed us. Very simply, you know, had to be rational thinkers through stuff and demonstrated how simple it was to not have had that explosion happen. We didn't know what was going to happen with the airlines when Reagan decided he was just going to go ahead and fire all the air traffic controllers because they were striking because they were being treated like shit. Well, at the time, my brother worked for Delta Airlines. On this side, and yeah, no, on on, on this side. Right. Uh, Calgary used to be a major hub for Delta many years ago. I mean, it, it wasn't Atlanta, but then again, what is? Um, <laughs> but but no, there there was a, there were some major corporate offices for Delta Airlines here in Calgary because you know oil patch and all that stuff, mm-hmm. a lot of travel. And my brother and I were talking, and he said, you know, when you graduate from high school, you know, maybe you should look at becoming an air traffic controller. I'm like. You mean work in the tower? He says, no, 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 no. Those guys don't work in the tower. The ones that actually control the traffic work underground almost. You know, they look at a view screen all day because they're the ones that, you know, they look at all the planes circling around and they get them in line. Uh, It's also one of the highest stress jobs out there for that very reason. The, The fact that 
okay, there is a multi-ton thing flying in the air filled with meat sacks that are depending on you to guide them to the right runway to so that you know they they come down as meat sacks and not as paste or charred steak as the case may be um so yeah the air traffic control is being treated like garbage yeah i can see it yeah i, I can understand um you know, Buddy here just suffered, you know, his seventh heart attack, but was still able to get that one seven forty seven in. You know, then he went to go shock himself. You know, I I can kind of understand where they're coming from on that. The, the fact that Reagan decided to drop the hammer probably made a few people feel good. You know, like oh, the, you know, get rid of them. They're uh, disgruntled people. They they should just be glad that they're working. Yeah. You know. And this is the same guy now drinking Budweiser, wearing a wife beater and bad shoes, watching Duck Dynasty, you know, talking about the good old days. And we had, um, you know, we had uh, we had uh, crime like crazy in, in New York City. I mean, we had uh, we had New York City in, in the 70s under Ed Koch, uh, if I remember right, uh, almost almost declare bankruptcy. The mm-hmm. garbage strike, also in the 70s. Oh, I remember that. I, where, I remember hearing about that one. Where garbage was literally piled up, um, like, you know, seven foot tall in mm-hmm. some cases. You know, we we didn't know what was going to be coming out of it all. And admittedly, you know, in in hindsight, there, there are things that could have been done differently. But again... When you're talking 20, 30, 40 years hindsight, oh, sure, yeah, it's it's easy to go ahead and try to, you know, figure how things were should have been done. Yeah. But when you're in the middle of history being made, it's, you don't have the luxury of looking back on a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, now, we've got more history to look back on for those that choose to. But now we got to kind of look the opposite direction now. What do we see with the wisdom that we've acquired over the years that we've been out of school? You know, 85, 80, 87, 89, you know, we have seen things. We grew up on things that shaped the way that we interpret how things are going. And now we've got effectively the, the new generation that are coming out. What are they going to have to deal with? Do we think, I I mean, the, the first thing that for me comes out of it all is there is going to be very likely a huge push not just in the medical area, because, I mean, we've heard about that for going on to 20 years. There's there's an immediate need for people in the medical industry. Yeah, uh, we know. But I could, I could good and goddamn guarantee you that there is going to be a massive push, a massive influx of folks who want to learn the law. Yeah. Because if and, there's going to be, if there's going to be something analogous to police, not by name, probably in the near future or in the however long it's going to take, but if there's going to be a new revision of police 2.0 in this country, there's going to be, there's going to have to be a complete new appreciation for the training that goes into it, starting with knowing the law and not yes. just as Stephanie put it, not just how to be a warrior. Mm-hmm. Um, Bridget, I, I, I want to ask you something about, um, I just, I want your thought on this. Do you think in, in your opinion that, um, let's say a retired or honorably discharged member of the military 
do you think for the most part that they would actually would they be a good way to a good person to transition to law enforcement do you think well i'm i'm gonna say that depends if they have been you know like a combat troop or something like that then i would be reluctant to let them transition into law enforcement just because you know they, they would have that war mentality I'm just, okay. I'm just gonna say that depends on what their role was in the military. Yeah. Well, okay. No, and that's that, that's fair. I was. Uh, it was just while we were having the conversation here that popped into my head mm-hmm. as to could that be a, you know, could that be an angle? <laughs> but, <laughs> but but probably I not. Most, <laughs> I, I think that we do have a lot of vets who are cops now, and I think that's part of the problem. I'm sorry. I was I was I was just laughing because I was thinking to myself, okay, you don't want a Frank Burns, but you could probably want a Radar O'Reilly. Well, yeah, you could, or you know, someone who had you know desk jobs or worked in supply chi- you know supply lines or something like that. The ones who know how a process is supposed to work and why it works. Yeah, I mean that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know when? Um, what, but when I don't want call? any. But I don't want any cops with PTSD out there. That would make I, it worse. no, no. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and that is not where I was going with it. That that, yeah. that was the actually that was the last thing I was thinking of. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I we, we don't want cops with PTSD on there. They, they'll gladly get their own PTSD in due time. No yeah. Colonel flags either. No. Yes, I'm making um, references to Mash. Bite me, okay? I don't care. Yeah. No, I, I think my biggest, um, like the the big thing for me is, you know, like just who can be a cop? Like, the, I I know I can't, and my, one of my brother's best friends became a cop, and I've talked about him before when when Bobby was on. And how he got he got put into a crucible of a place where crime was insane and where now up here and I do not I, I will not adopt a smug posture when I say this. But last I heard, last I read statistically, throughout their career, an RCMP officer will never draw their gun. He drew it, I think it was three or four times in his first year where he was and he he went to my brother's house at like three o'clock in the morning because he needed to talk to somebody and my brother sat there for three or four hours to convince him not to quit because he was he it, it just it messed with his head so you you've got to be a certain level of mental you got to have a certain level of mental fortitude and based on what i've seen down there and again i'm not trying to be smug but uh there are a lot of people down there that really should not be wearing that badge because they do not have the mind for it yeah yeah there's a there's a similar thing with uh, uh with uh in the in the medical field there's some people who will faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> yeah. No, and and yeah, you know, they should not be anywhere near the medical field. <laughs> well, or, or, well, okay, wait a minute. Unless it, I work for an optometrist or something. I was going to say a GP. Yeah. You know who works in a clinic who does not typically deal with blood. Yeah, uh, but, but I mean, you still have to draw labs. You know. Yeah. Now, there there is an alternative, of course, where you could be tangentially related in the medical field if you, you squeam at the side of blood. You could be working records. Okay, yeah. you know that's that that will get you away from that. But there's also the other side of the whole damn thing, which is the 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 people. I'm not going to say guys. It's much more prevalent with the big manly machismo testosterone balls dangling on the floor grunt guys who get into 
who think themselves the closest thing to God's gift to the world because they can wield a little itty bitty blade. Mm-hmm. I've I've heard this happen with surgeons Doctor far and away. Oh, heart surgeons are the worst. Yeah, Doctor Strange. You you've seen the movie, or at least you know the story. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was a guy who was as he. I, I think he actually had a gland that secreted hubris. Hmm. And look what happened to him. Well, I mean, all things considered, he, he ended up pretty good. I mean, you know. Well, yeah. You know, when he when he finally, you know, got called to the carpet in such a thing. Um, I mean, when I had my surgery, I dealt with a guy who was apparently, when it came to what I needed done, he was the best in the, he was the best in the West. Quite literally, he, he was the top surgeon. And when I showed up to get that uh, drain thing removed hmm. from my, my body, it was the last thing. I walked into his office and he looked like I was going to smack him upside the head with a rolled up newspaper. Because of all the crap that I had to go through. He, you know, it, it was his hand that opened me up that allowed whatever the fuck it was, there's my one, to, to get in there and really make sure that I was not going to have a good couple of uh, months. You know? Yeah. And, um, and Bridget, when uh, when my wife had to go for uh, having uh, a, good, a good size of her liver excised for the, the cancer, and uh, the doctor said that, you know, uh, the national national mortality rate was uh, was twenty percent, but his mortality rate was three percent. And he went ahead and he said, "You know, when, when I said, you know, that, that's great," and he's just like, "Yeah, that's great, unless you're part of that three percent." Yeah, I started to have I started to have really good feelings about his his level of you know be, being on level with us. But the morning that she was going to go in, I was, I was in the, I was in the, you know, I was in the waiting general, you know, waiting area uh, in the inside of this place. And he came over to me and he, he said, you know, I'm going to be going in for uh, getting ready for the, uh, the surgery and everything. Is there anything last minute that you want to ask me? And I've, I've talked about this before and I've, I've suggested this to people before I thought about it for a couple of seconds. I looked at him and I said, are you having a good day? And this completely floored him for a couple of seconds. And he finally like got it and he smiled and, and, and he, he kind of nodded and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good day today. Somebody like that, that's somebody that I can, well, I, I respect him probably as high as anybody that I've ever known in my life. I refuse to call him doctor. I call him by his first name. When I speak with him, when I had spoken with him, because I saying calling him doctor is not nearly as important as how much of a person he is first and foremost, even if he does have the title and that is his job. That's not who he is to me. Would you agree with me that that's the kind of person that everybody would should want to have in a situation where you've got a, 20% mortality rate if you're going in under the knife or something. Yeah. So somebody like that, you know, you, you, you take that idea. We know the type of person that we want to be protecting and serving the public. That's what makes it really hard, isn't it? When we know people that 
like Dallin said, you know, really want to do right. But when everybody else is, you know, sticking their dick on the on the on the on the scales, what the hell are you supposed to do? You know, and I, and I think at that point, and that's where large large police forces in big cities, this is where they have the big problems. Like you look at, you, you look at a small town or a, a district that has, that either has its own police force, like, you know, a local sheriff. Yeah. Like, or out by where I yeah, live out in the sticks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or, um, they have a, let's say a subset of police that, you know, like a precinct where maybe they have a regular rotation. So like every six months they rotate the personnel out, but you know that from January to June, it's, you know, Rick, Joe, Tom, Sue, Gretchen, and Marty. But then from June to December, it's another group. And you just, they become known in the community. You know what I mean? Like, no, I get, I get you. I I, get... I'm not necessarily saying that that you know the, the the sheriff will excuse the behavior of somebody, but there's much more but... context that can yes. be taken. And, yeah, there, there's context. There's community. Um... That's the word I'm looking for. That's what I said. Like no, they, no, they, they become, but they become figures of the community. They are they are known. Yeah, they are interacted with. They're invested. By, by the yeah and actually yeah they're invested in the community and <clears throat> they project that you know what i'm here for you I'm, I'm not here to serve the governor i'm not here to serve the mayor i'm here to make sure that your daughter will make it home at night and if for some reason something happens to her i'm gonna find out who did it and I'm going to show you what it means to throw the book at somebody, you know, and, and this is where I think, like, I grew up in a small town. We did. And the, the police force we had was a detachment of the RCMP, which is. Uh, the horseback riders. Well, yeah, but, but more than that, they're, they are a federal police force. Mm -hmm. They have a presence in every, every city, every province. Uh, okay. Not every city. But they do have a presence in every province in the country. Um, we have detachments here. Um, now, where I live now, we have a city police force. And they take jurisdiction. Uh, if the RCMP comes in, it's by request or they've said something because maybe they're chasing a federal fugitive. I don't know. But these are the people I grew up with. I grew up with the RCMP. I got to know a few of them good people uh where my sister lives right now back home uh the it's either one house or two houses down was a residence for one of the police officers who was on rotation so it was like uh it was an rcmp house or dwelling i guess and the on-duty police officer, that's where they lived for six to eight months before they were rotated out. So they're, they're right in the middle of the neighborhood. The, the cop car was in the driveway. So that person became part of the community. Yep. And, you know, in, invite Constable Smithers over for the barbecue. You know, little little granny Nantucket from down on the corner brings up an apple pie, you know, but when something goes wrong, officer switches from community watch person to I'm going to make your day very bad for the bad guy. And I think we need, we need more of that where the, the police in question are invested in the communities that they're patrolling. And I, I know uh, in like, especially New York, a lot of the, like a cop who goes into Queens, again, I'm being very general here because of my lack of, of knowledge, but a, but a police officer that goes into Queens does not live in Queens. 
generally speaking. Could, yeah, they could live. I want to say Brooklyn, but I could be wrong. No, yeah, uh, the the density would would make sense. Queens yeah. going to Brooklyn, Brooklyn going to Queens, uh, or or the nearby other, yeah, yeah. Needless to say, um, the police officer that you meet, you'd never know where they lived unless you came out of your neighborhood and went into his neighborhood, which could be miles away. This guy could have one hell of a commute. And while that anonym, while that anonymity yep. may help protect the officer from really bad people, it also has gives him a hard time of endearing himself to the good people who who he's trying to look out for. Like where where's the investment? Is I guess what I'm saying. Yeah. And let's face it, just overall population densities in these mega cities i know i know the judge dread i know i know uh, no, no, no. you're right though it's insane yeah you know like um now again i the last time i was in the new york area i was coming back from anthracon mm. so you know i just i went from one airport to another didn't didn't really get to see the sights of of the big apple but from what i've heard it's people stacked one on top of the other in these little cubicles and the whole place smells like sour milk. Yeah. So I've heard it. It can be like that. Yeah. Um, the, the areas of, of Brooklyn that I remember, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, the areas that I remember uh, were not, not too dissimilar to uh, what you'd see uh, from, the more recent Spider-Man, uh, you know, uh, changeover where you've got the, you've got the, the shops on the first floor, you've got the bodega, and then you've got, you know, two, three, sometimes four floors on top of that walk up and they're yeah. all apartments. And yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you know, those are some of the less dense areas too. So. Yeah. And you know. you'd pay, and I bet you you'd pay more for one of those apartments that I'm paying for this condo right here that it, I live in. It, it's entirely possible, yeah, you know, but the, it, 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 but the thing is you can't do the model that's been going on, which is you've got, you got one cop driving around, driving to patrol an area that's got, you know, closing in on to what? 20,000 people. Yeah. You know, it's it it's positively insane. And that's why I'm thinking that uh, and uh hold, hold on a second. Uh I'm sorry. I normally I'd be able to read and talk at the same time right now that's not working. Yeah, yeah. Uh original police were recruited from the area that policed. True. And I much prefer that idea until the point where it starts to get into the whole nepotism cronyism thing which is a whole other pain in the ass it's a whole other piece over there uh they were set up in the terrifying uh, just okay um where was i gonna go oh the uh, the reason why i'm thinking and and bridget again uh, i'm hoping that you've got something on this one i'm figuring that with the way that this stuff could be unfolding, the newer, the newer graduates might be wanting to see what they could do to try to alleviate some of this, learn the law, learn how this stuff is supposed to work, learn how, I don't know that I want to say law enforcement as a specific term, but you, you get the idea where I'm going on this one. So that instead of necessarily being part of the police force V2, whatever exactly that would be, a more generalized push for helping to organize areas, organizing the people themselves into, if not necessarily self-sufficiency with keeping the community safe, having the community actually help watch out for themselves and each other kind of the same way that 
Curtis Lewa got the the angels to help patrol the the subways that maybe these guys can help organize grassroots the communities to to keep themselves safer, more organized, less having to worry about extrajudicial executions. Well, the other thing too, and I, I think this is where other pieces are going to come from, and yeah, look at that one. Yeah, the the UK tra- police training starts with six months in the classroom, including learning the law. Which, yes, that is important. That is massively important. Um, but the other thing too is right now in a lot of these larger urban neighborhoods, the thought of anything tangentially related to the police is bad. And what happens if, you know, you get, let, let's say for a neighborhood of, of a few hundred people, you get three or four of these you know, okay, let's, let's, for the sake of argument, let's call them deputies. Okay. So these people, okay, so these people have been deputized, they've been trained, they know the procedures, um, they're, they're not, they don't have that badge unless they are vetted, as good at, uh, vetted, as good as they can be. They've got, they, they've got the kind of training that even a union person would go, that's too much, which isn't. <laughs> no, it never is. Now, the thing is, the second they they go to break something up in that neighborhood, you know, automatically there's going to be a stigma attached to it, attached to them. I, where I'm going with this is that there's going to be there, there's a matter of personal responsibility, hmm. and there's a lot of outcry now. You know, of course, the big buzz buzz term is defund the police or abolish the police, which is insane if you take it at face value uh, now, at, a, at, at the at the letter of what's being said yeah okay yeah it, the, no, I, I know you, you unpack it there's a lot more behind it but it wouldn't all fit on one placard yeah <laughs> i get and, it as i know i've we've talked about it too damn many times there's yeah, so and, much more context than what's yes really there, there. there is um but but to my point um right now like if if it even looks like you have some kind of a badge on you like you're you're marked and i saying that you know we can police ourselves or we can have our own neighborhood watch you know provided we have the legislative power to to execute the law so to speak it sounds good until you step up and go okay who wants it if you want it, this is what we're expecting of you. Which one of you is going to step up? And I think that's going to be the hard part is because when some of these people finally realize what's going to be involved and what what's going to be expected of them, I think a lot of people are just going to be like, you know what? This really isn't for me. You know, it's 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 one thing to scream and yell for it. But if if you are if you're the loudest voice saying that this has to change, but you are not willing to become the implementation of that change, then, sir or madam, I question your uh, I question your conviction. I don't know that that's necessarily recognizing that something needs to change because there is something wrong. That in and of itself is, that's a good. Not being capable. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say too yeah. much past that one. Not being capable to take on the mantle. Uh, I'm not really trying to reference Batman. Just No, I, I get it. I get um, it. That. That, and pardon me, recognizing that you don't have what it takes to take on that mantle of authority 
and not pushing to do it. That's an ultimate good. Because nobody needs somebody in that kind of a position that shouldn't be there. It's another one of those catch-22 items. You know that you shouldn't be in that particular type of position, but maybe that's exactly the type of person that should be in that position. Somebody that perhaps wants to avoid the the trappings of power corrupts. We don't yeah. want we don't want somebody in there that's gonna be taking on that lust. But yeah. we don't want to exclude somebody that's gonna be knowing full well what that's entirely for. And and then we end up in the same kind of situation. How do you weed out the ones that want to be in there f- that shouldn't be versus should be? And how do you go through all that? It's it's a tangled mess, no matter how you go about it. Yeah, and it's it is complicated, and unfortunately, I think it's necessary. Oh yeah, and not just and not just for setting up. You know, if you're going to go the neighborhood deputy route again, I I, I use the term because yeah. I really can't think of anything else. It seems uh, to make sense. Yeah, a neighborhood watch feels a little too king of the hill and not very official. But you know, a, a deputy like a, a deputized member, which, which means they are basically they have the backing of the police. Mm. you know but the expectation should also be that they are trained as a cop and I think a lot of this stringent I I think there has to be a lot of retraining there has to be a lot of reevaluation and yeah I think a lot of the existing police forces need to be reduced not not as a matter of you know, appeasing one side or the other, but getting the chaff out there, out of there, and having a core of good, of of real officers, not these ramb like, basically managing a lot of expectations for people. You know, because I think a lot of, I think a lot of people on the forces these days, they, they grew up with, you know, Dragnet, Law and Order, SWAT, mm-hmm. and that that one I I have a big problem with. Um, I think a lot of them grew up with these shows, and there was an expectation that you know what it's it's going to be. You know, emptying clips into the bad guy every other week. Miami Vice. Yeah, That's Miami Vice. Uh, that that was one that I always had a problem with. I mean, the, the show had some nice dramatic elements. Which is kind of like saying I only read Playboy for the articles, but <laughs> that's another story. Dropping five um, Uzi clips just because you can. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, but the second you have a wardrobe malfunction on the Academy Awards, everybody loses their minds. You know. Uh, but enough about the boobs on TV. Yeah. No, we haven't even gotten to DC yet. But um, but, but what I'm getting at is I, I think there has to be a lot of expectations managed when it comes to people who apply for the police force. And I can't help but think that, um, yeah, I saw that as, as an aside, yeah. Stephanie, Stephanie said, as an aside, the special forces think Rambo is a comedy as they know he would fail instantly if he really went in. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but, Oh, where was I going with this? I, I think a lot of a, a lot of people join the police force with the expectation that there's there's going to be action and they'll be able to, you know, shoot the bad guy, because that's what they were brought up with on TV and in movies and all of that. Because it's the quote unquote clean and easy exit for the problem. Well, and it's it's the culture too. Well, you know, again, yeah. it's the it's the fetishization of firearms, uh, which is a big thing in the U.S. And I mean, I, I'm not. No, again, you, I do. You, I do not throw. No, but I'm not throwing shade on anybody who's two a. Um, 
you know, I, I have no problem with people having the right to, to, to own a firearm. And we've talked about in some cases, it's probably a good thing to have mm -hmm. depending on the situation. So I'm not throwing shade at that, but what I am throwing shade on is that these people who then get in thinking that, you know, you know, they, they get in the car, they're jazzed up because they, they want something to happen because I imagine it's it's got to be one hell of a release for people like that when they can beat the snot out of somebody or ultimately shoot somebody. That, that's got to be, I, I want to say it's almost orgasmic, depending on, you know, the, the tension that they're feeling. You know, it's a release of, of sorts. People like that should not have a badge. And if there has been any influence by police unions as to the rejigging of these requirements for that reason, you know, to, to, to lower, to lower the bar so that, you know, anybody can get in, you know, a la police Academy, the movie series, you know, if, if they've had a hand in that, then they have to be told no. They have to be said, no, these are the standards. These are the expectations. And that's the way it is. Yeah. You know, the, the, the fact that, you know, Neely boy there, and I'm using that because a, I can't fully remember his name. B, I don't even want to say it. Um, the, the fact that, uh, that someone like him was able to put on the uniform and I've, I've looked at this guy's track record. And oh my God, there's no way in hell this guy should have had a uniform. Yeah. E even that long, like the, the first one gone as far as I'm concerned. And, and people will say, well, you know, then you have a manpower shortage. Then you have a manpower shortage and you do something about it. You know, you, you provide scholarships, you, you provide, you make it sound that it, 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 uh, being a cop is not about getting the bad guy. It's about serving your community. Because, you know, I see a lot of army recruitment commercials on TV. You know that uh, I, I love it too, where you've got the, you got the one dude pulling apart the engine of an AH 64 Apache in one scene. And the next scene, he's working a desk job with a suit and tie. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, Stephanie, you're right. Maybe you got a manpower shortage because of bad apples. Yeah, because the, the bad apples present project the wrong image. And people look at that and go, you know, my daddy wanted to be a cop when he was a kid. You know, when I grow up, I want to be a policeman. I think many of us have said that. I did. Uh, yeah. Well, you kind of had one degree of separation from all of that, too, admittedly. Mm. You know, I mean, if I went that route, I could have said I want to be a soldier because my dad was. Um, yeah, well, your dad was also kind of badass. I mean, you had a choice. You could have gone a soldier. You could have, you know, been pillaging the fjords. I don't know. I, don't, I mean... Okay, now, now we're... Well, Minnesota. Well, we're actually going to find out a little bit about that in a few weeks. Oh, we'll talk about um, that then. I, I, no, I did, the, uh, I, did the ancest, I did the ancestry thing. Crap. I just, <laughs> I, just, uh, I just had a big internal yawn, and I didn't even realize that I, I... I was looking at the wrong numbers on my screen. I didn't realize what time we were getting to, and we actually, we actually, we actually should have been wrapping already. Crap. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, that's that's the way it goes. Um, we've we uh, Dal and I have talked way way too much. Uh, Bridget, as always, I keep telling well, myself I don't want to do that. It it, it it happens. It happens. Don't worry about it. Uh, Bridget, what do you want to what do you want to um, drop in here as a, as a last item before we just wrap the whole damn thing up? Because I mean, like I said, we've 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 both kind of dominated the, the talk tonight sorry i don't really have anything well that makes it easy then 
<laughs> See, th this is why I always feel guilty when I open my mouth is because, like, she's just probably sitting there just going, yeah, here he goes again. And, and uh, more appropriately, you know full well, I want you to chime in when you've got something. Uh, and I know sometimes it's just, yeah, kind of like Joe. Yeah, I got nothing really. So I don't yeah. ever, I don't ever want it to be a situation of, well, you know, I just didn't want to interrupt. I, I, I want you to go ahead and just interrupt any time, you know. Well, good luck to all the graduates. We have left you a mess, and I'm sorry. We didn't mean to. <laughs> no, we didn't. The whole thing is really bigger than... So much more than, than we, we could have imagined. But um, speaking on behalf of the show, for, on, on behalf of all of us, and not, not for myself, we didn't all cause this to have happen, but we're going to do the damnedest that we can to help. You know, you, you, you graduates are the next, you're the next wave that's going to come in and be pushing. And admittedly, as somebody who's 50 years old, and, you know, we are all collectively pretty damn close to it, we'll do the best that we can and we will help you. And just remember, just because we got gray hair don't mean that we're out of it just yet. We'll do our best to help you. We owe you. We owe it to you. We got to get out of here and... Um, I'm going to do my best to... Uh, hold myself together long enough to get myself to bed because lord knows i could probably use it so as always everybody thank you for being with us you take good care of yourselves i hope that you had something worthwhile that you found in all the stuff that we had to talk about tonight uh bridget thank you ever so much and um you know l like i said uh i hope that uh hope that you have yourself a, a, a decent enough week coming up yeah, I hope so, too. I'll do my best. Anything coming up for you guys uh, at the moment? Or is stuff still, mostly on a hiatus? Yeah, still on hiatus. Yeah. All right. So, fuck Mike Pence. <laughs> well, it, I mean, from what we're understanding, uh, it, it's entirely possible that uh, you wouldn't be able to, but there might be others who are of a different chromosomal background who might be able to maybe <laughs> well remember the only one in his life is his wife uh wasn't that, wasn't that his big thing well yep. and he calls her mother and that's just really creepy yeah wait what oh you didn't know about that one oh yeah that's 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 a that's a long that's a long one right there and um <laughs> Anybody wants to look this stuff up, uh, I believe it's um, hashtag Lady G, I think is the uh, the thing going on around that. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's just go ahead and say that um, he might get sued by the Disney company because uh, he, he sounds more and more like Mickey Mouse, the more excited he gets, apparently. Well, you know what? Disney could use the money. No. Oh, we just around here, at least in my house, we refer to Lady G as Blanche. Blanche. <laughs> um. <sighs> he always gets a case of the papers and has to find the fainting couch. <laughs> 
brain stop braining I'm having <laughs> bad visuals <laughs> see I, I i hear you talking but all i'm hearing is gloria sugar baker right about now so not a great tv show but some some memorable characters right there i got half a bottle of crown sitting in the living room might not make it to morning <laughs> yeah well, we'll see what happens anyway folks for getting in touch with you uh you can find me on facebook bridget fitch or at my blog bridget fitch 2112.wordpress.com you take care of yourself huh i'm gonna try Dallin, of course, as always, uh, thank you ever so much. By the way, did you did you get to see the uh, uh, pictures that I uh, uh, that I threw up on? Uh, well, um, posted up on Facebook from uh, from earlier today. I did. Yeah, it was really good. Little one's got himself a whole bunch of uh, people chiming in on you him. Know, I forgot that he had a Twitter account, and he's just like looking up the hashtag for tiny triple and he's finally like oh, screw this noise man fine I'll, I'll just go ahead and claim the claim claim the account name oh. forgot about that well i mean um now he's uh he stormed that one castle and he's about to get on to the next one mm. just hearkening back to what you used to say back in the day you know have fun storming the castle yeah, I I think that that one's been successfully stormed. Now it's on to the next one. That's true. That's true. Plug yeah, all uh, of your things, yes, sir. Yeah, a little little lax in the duty here, but I'll try to get it up tomorrow. Um for the audio version of the show over at holycraftthevlogcast.com. Uh, random thoughts, conscious and streams, and you know, when I need to scream into the void, that's over at in the wind.yo5.ca. And if Thor will leave me the hell alone tomorrow, <laughs> I can get the recording done for the other show that I do, uh, my writing show, The Kick in the Cast, over at kickit.yo5.ca. Yep. Good luck with all that, man. Seriously. Yeah, they're, they're all subdomains now. Maybe if, if, if the podcast takes off the way I want it to, maybe then I'll purchase the domain for it. But until then, and hey, I still got to, I, I need to find work too, so. Yeah. Piece at a time. Mm -hmm. Piece at a time. So, uh, thank you guys for being with us. Over in the live chat, uh, Stephanie, Felis, uh, thank you guys. And who was here earlier? That was uh, TP Seeker. Sorry you weren't able to stick around. You had to go off. It's okay. Uh, as always, if you uh, want to get in contact with us, all our information is over at holycrapvodcast.com. This was mentioned. Uh, the phone number, of course, if you want to leave a message, is 859-HCTV-554, 859-4288-554. I will be using that same phone number for the upcoming phone-in show. I'm not quite sure what to call it just yet. I've got to... I gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk to Sam and Rebecca a little bit about this and try to figure out how this is gonna work. But um, I'll give you guys a little bit of heads up because I would love to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of test time in, probably soon. So be on the lookout on the social posts, and I will have uh, I will have uh, a couple of test times to work off of. I'll probably stream it simultaneously to YouTube also on the same channel because it would seem stupid not to use that just i mean just got it might as well use it i mean it's, it's, technically it's free it's, whatever i will get uh i'll get all the information together uh for the show get that uh, done before i go to bed and And we got uh, we got uh, we got a new chapter to start writing. So, thank you for being with us, and for all of you who are graduates or the graduates of twenty three seventy nine. I don't know, I don't know when the hell it's going to be. There's a lot you're going to be able to do. Go out there and do it. Don't take no for an answer.
I don't think that there's very much of anything else I can say without lapsing into melancholia from my own past. So we'll get our asses on out of here. Thank you for being with us. So, till the next time we get together, everyone, as always, I wish you the peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well. Please stay safe, stay healthy, above all else. Stay safe. And of course, my lady. Fifteen years on. We finally got to the end of this road. Well, Matane Fujin, I love you. I miss you. Dream of us. And we did it. Till the next time we get together, everyone. As always, good night.